The Sun Also Rises by Ernest Hemingway. A book talk. The Sun Also Rises is a post-World War I novel by Ernest Hemingway where a group of British and American expatriates travel, drink, and get caught up in confusing relationships. The narrator begins the story by describing his fellow writer, Robert Cohn, who used to be a top boxer in college, and now Jake is not really like besties with Cohn, but he tolerates him. Jake remains tolerant of Cohn even after he falls for Jake's all-time love, Brett Ashley. Brett, who is divorced from the Count as she used to be Lady Brett Ashley, is now a partier and loves to drink and she rocks the short haircut. And she was a nurse in the war and took care of Jake after his injury, which led to him being impotent. Jake rarely spends his time working and would much rather drink and party with his friends Cone and American writer Bill Gordon. One night Jake goes out to party and he ends up running into Brett. They go away and drink privately, and that's when Brett reveals to Jake that she does love him. And the sad part is, she is unwilling to give up the intimate relations that Jake cannot provide, so they can never be in a relationship. Cohn reveals to Jake that he has feelings for Brett, and they've even had a brief affair, but Jake insists that Brett is in love with Mike Campbell, and this obviously creates tension between Jake and Cohn. Jake plans a fishing trip to France with Bill to get away from everything, and Brett asks if she and Mike can join, and Jake agrees. So they all plan on meeting there, but Brett and Mike never show up in France, but they all end up reuniting Pamplona. And in Pamplona, Mike and Jake and Cohen, they all are just pining for Brett's love. But then comes the fiesta, and Jake is a bullfighting connoisseur. So he is introduced to Pedro Romero, a very promising young 19-year-old kid who is bullfighting and he does extremely well in his first fight. Stop! Spoilers ahead! And obviously Brett immediately falls in love with the masculinity and the young and just everything about him. So Cohn is obviously really mad at Jake for introducing Brett and Pedro because he's taken the love of Cone's life, apparently. And so Cone ends up knocking Jake out and he takes out Mike and even punches Pedro Romero. But being the masculine, manly man that he is, he just gets right back up. When the fiesta's all over, that means no more drama, everyone goes home and Jake, he goes to France and then he goes all the way back to San Sebastian and relaxes in the nature, but then he gets a telegram from Brett saying that she urgently needs him in Madrid. So he goes there. She tells Jake that her and Romero are over. He wanted to marry her, but she had never been interested in a domestic life like that, hence her getting a divorce with the Count. She also reminisces on the fact that her and Jake could have had such a good relationship but it would never work out and Jake surprisingly accepts it and isn't trying to pine for her love. Analysis time! As we look further into The Sun Also Rises, there are a few different themes revolving around masculinity, the effects of war, and escapism. Hemingway describes this lost generation as the generation of those who feel that the lives that they're leading after the war are purposeless and they feel out of place. This helps the reader develop a better understanding of the massive effect that the war has taken on all the characters' lives. To escape this lost feeling, each member of the group copes with it in their different ways. Jake Barnes, along with many others, use drinking as a way to get away from reality. As he has stated, Under the wine, I lost the disgusted feeling and was happy. Bill, on the other hand, has turned to a comic take on things, and as one of Jake's closest friends, he acts as a foil to Jake's internal negativity in many scenes they share. Brett engages in many impulsive, meaningless relationships in order to escape her lonely reality. She's had relations with Mike, Cone, Romero, and of course, Jake. All of her relationships can be represented by bullfighting, 
and how Brett makes these men fight for her affection. Romero serves as the masculine ideal in this story. He's this incredible young bullfighter and charms Brett by giving her his cape and actual ear from one of the bulls he fought. However, this traditional life is not what Brett wants, and she decides to go back to Mike. As I was reading, I noted several times how water is very relevant symbol in this book. In the beginning, Jake and Bill go fishing, and it's very evident that this is one of the most enjoyable and drama-free scenes for these characters. They're surrounded by water, just like Jake is at the end of the novel, when he is back in San Sebastian and is surrounded by all the nature and all the drama has resolved. Not only is water significant to Jake, but Brett as well. During the story, Brett takes a lot of baths. This is another way to escape for her, but it also serves as almost a physical way to purify her soul and wash away the guilt that she has after partaking in numerous affairs. She feels the need to bathe before encounters with new men, like when she was about to meet with Mike and says, Haven't bathed. Michael comes in tonight. Must clean myself. She's compelled to wash off the remorse she has for sleeping with other men before she can meet with Mike. In the last chapter of this novel, Brett asks Jake to come to Madrid and they end up in a taxi together just as they were in chapter 4 when Jake could not accept Brett's rejection. But this time, Brett tells Jake that she loves him and we could have such a damn good time together. But Jake simply responds with, yes, isn't it pretty to think so? And he has accepted that he can never have Brett, but he's not upset. He's content, proving his roundness of his character and how far he's come because of this trip. Because this story is being told in first person by Jake Barnes, it really allows the reader to get some real insight on his character, his feelings, his struggles, what it's like to be him, and ultimately how the war has changed his life completely. Knowing all this and knowing how everything played out really led to, in my opinion, a very satisfying ending. And I really did enjoy reading this book, and honestly, 10 out of 10 would recommend to literally anyone would like this. Thanks for watching, bye!